Hey, this is Bernie here on uh, Friday, October the 9th, just before Thanksgiving Canada weekend. I tend to celebrate two Thanksgivings a year because my kids do as well, living in the U.S. with their mother, I suppose, and uh, they're both Canadian and U.S. resident citizens, and I am a Canadian alone in that way. But uh, I tried once before to get my U.S. citizenship. Maybe I'll do it again in the future. There might be good reason, and sometimes it's timing, the way all the strings come together, not, no, it just doesn't work if it's the wrong time, right? You can try all you want, but timing's everything. So the three bears are on my mind. Remember that old fable? Who's been sitting in my chair? Who's been drinking out of my cup? Just enjoying a good coffee here Friday morning as I work. And, uh, you know, the three bears is a good analogy for any business person, businessman, I suppose, or woman, sniffing out what's going on around your market, who's been sitting in your chair, who's been out trying to steal your business and eat your lunch. That's a forte everybody has to have if you want to stay alive. You can't let your customers, dear to you in your heart, slip through your hands, right? They're a precious gem. They pay the bills. So, Anybody like Mike, I suppose, at his restaurant or the crew at Original Joe's or whoever, they're always wanting to invite you back and they're telling you about things that are going on. And uh, I just, I always appreciate that because I tend to do that myself as a business person. So today our title is Impact, Be a Man. In these Business Enterprise Chronicles, the barbecue sessions that we're on, and we're kind of waiting on our steaks. Um... The courier package uh, with payment on the new contract, uh, I think, is showing up here anytime. So I've been trying to spend as much time around the office as possible not to miss it. Not that I would. They deliver them to the the depot if you're not home. But uh, it's nice to receive things firsthand. And then we'll go on to cook those steaks as a uh, portion of CCI. Thanksgiving, maybe a barbecue celebration as a draw on the income before we get our accountant set up and paying me a salary later in the year. It'd be nice if it could happen this month, but I just doubt it. Seems like nothing happens quicker than two months anymore when you try to push something forward unless you're being pulled on. And sometimes, you know, the goal is you are pulled on. I remember the story of Daryl Sutter, and this is kind of a perfect analogy of the call, the call to business or the call to your life. He's uh, him and his five brothers all played in the NHL kind of when I was in my uh, growing up and early teen young manhood age, I suppose. And uh, they're Alberta boys. Uh, grew up around Viking, Alberta. One of them's uh, married to a cousin, uh, neighbor, a cousin of mine over in central Alberta as well. And uh, anyways, watch those guys play. There was twins, twins in my family. Commonly, we are a hockey family. But Daryl had kind of retired from his hockey career. He's at home feeding the cows. And the phone rings, and it's the L.A. Kings. And they want a coach, and they call him. So he had to make a choice. Do I give up the cows and feed them, or do I coach the L.A. Kings for the winter? Or maybe, I think it turned out to be four seasons. I forget now. And I guess he's with the Anaheim Ducks now as an advisor. But uh, he brought them home two Stanley Cups. In that uh, time he was there. So quiet guy, kind of intent. But that's the way it goes. Sometimes you get the call, the call of God, I suppose, if you want to word it that way, in our Good Samaritan prose of things. Uh, but in a business consulting sense, the call you have in life isn't always made inside of you where someone rings the phone and you get the call. Like Daryl did, other people that has happened to as well. He's my the example I'm using here, but often you have to go find it. You have to work away at getting the call happening and what you're supposed to be doing, your business call. I could have gave up years ago. You know, I had set out on a journey. I got married. I had kids, I suppose, and I thought we were going to do one thing and sort of the element or the status quo of how markets look in a paradigm that you're in. And uh, I, I married a medical doctor. 
And she was a big fit, I thought, because uh, health is a big part of important to me and kind of the promotion of my company. Well, life went on and we divorced and, you know, got our separate ways going. But uh, you don't quit. If something's meant to be and it's inside of you and it's what you're supposed to be doing, your design of things, you push forward. I could have gave up and quit. Well, you know, it's been challenging, but, uh, you know, you know you're on the right track, so you just keep doing it, right? And what's the downside if you quit? You may never be a content person ever. You might be very miserable to be around. And you got to get over some of your own issues in life. And, you know, I've worked through my entire life on a growth journey. I used to call myself Bernie on Journey on my email address. And uh, life is a journey. So, uh, you know, one of the things I want to show you today, these are challenging times. And my encouragement in this video, Encouragement Pro to you, there's a good course offered by Center Street Church, which I suppose I'm a member of. I don't get there, mind you, who does during COVID, but I uh, don't get there often enough. But I like to hear some of their messages, and I connect with friends from there, I suppose. But here is this course. It's called The Authentic Manhood Journey, The Quest. And what it's about is authenticism. Are you a true, authentic person, a man that uh, I suppose is the same inside as you are out. You're congruent, you're integrous. The way you conduct business and do things, I suppose, you can be depended on. When people shake their hand, they know it meant something. There's a promise there to go forward and do business. Authenticity, authentic means, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing, the right thing, when nobody's looking or is it just to appease people when they're around and then you go off on a different comfort of your own when they're not around or you're not around them? Or are you the same congruent inside out and you're doing it no matter when you're all alone in those hard moments and you just got to do it and push through stuff and get it done and you're doing it, you're on the right track. So that is something worth looking into and I, it's a 40 Wheat course, you can find it on their website. They do have live stuff each week. Just go into the man section, they got all the different classifications of people that a church would uh, administer righteousness through teaching in various services they provide in elements of teaching the ancient scriptures, the Bible, prose, and then. You can learn from history what happened to other men, men if you're a man. I suppose there's women's stuff, children, all kinds of stuff on there. But I'm talking about men today. Make an impact. Be a man. And in these challenging times, you might find you're suffering through stuff. And you're having a hard time wanting to get up and pull your socks and your boots on and get going. And uh, you can't go into the dust. You can't give up. You can't want to just die. And I know from experience the agony of just wanting to quit and throw it all away because nothing seems like tomorrow's coming. The agony of that is worse than the challenges that you go through in life and the pains and the agony of defeat sometimes till you get out the other side. It's way worse. So you don't give up. And I've probably never had more than one or two days of that in a row where I just had to decide, you know, I got to go on. There's no option here. We got to Seek the Lord and find something. Reinvent this, whatever it was meant to be. Create a new paradigm, a new push into the market. And that's much of what you see now in my life with my company as I've purported it forth to you, Connections Consulting Group of Companies. It's by design I pushed forth into this, creating something new out of a barren place where giving up would have been the other option. But you can't quit, you can't die you got to go on. So I'm putting this forth to you as a suggestion in this time. You may want to look it up. If you go on cschurch.ca, you can find it in their archives, I suppose, The Authentic Manhood Journey. And, uh, you know, there's 40 different topics in a 40-week period, but I'll give you four quick ones, kind of the element of it. You know, wounded maybe you were a man that was abused by your father he used to beat you and i'm sorry if he did and that happened that has happened to some boys in different sects of society more so than others even poverty stricken areas disease all that but uh you know 
wounded. Maybe he beat you. Maybe he walked out on you and your mom and left you behind. And you had no one to guide you in your life. You fulfilled your life in the best way you knew. And it wasn't righteous at all. You were out stealing and gunning people down and whatever. You can get over that. Maybe he was around simply just absent in his own heart. And he didn't spend time with you. And he, and he didn't teach you anything or guide you. Maybe your father you know, buried you in the mud almost by just picking on you and, and being just verbally abusing you. If that was you, and a lot of men don't have this issue, but some do and many do actually, no, not a lot. I, I don't know what the percentage would be, but uh, if you're one of those guys, this course will help you get through that, put the dust behind you and get your feet planted on the ground and go ahead. Another key category would be uh, a man and his wife. Well, I'm a single guy. Why am I talking about that? But you know what? You can go through stuff like this and learn even preparing for the future. Maybe you got a wife coming into your business or into part of you and your life. Prepare yourself, men. Maybe you have a wife right now. You're struggling through marriage issues because of the hard times we're in COVID. This could be helpful. Two other categories. Uh, is uh, a man in his life journey, making a plan. So kind of what is your plan as a man? What are you going to do with your life beyond COVID, getting through COVID? You know, how, are you going to just struggle? Are you going to find some new ways to do things and get creative to have the income coming in and surviving is a big part of the plan to go on and build the destiny for life and pass something down to your kids if you have. Right now, we're thinking a lot about today and getting through this time, but this too will pass. There'll be a light at the end of the tunnel. And then the last point, of course, is uh, ways to be a leader. You know, and serving is a big part of that. Whatever you have as a talent, utilizing that and serving others, providing a cost effective service to people, I suppose. Maybe you're well equipped financially. Serving is sometimes a uh, you're, you know, you uh, give a benefit to other people by volunteering and doing it. And I, I did a lot of that as I was on my educational journey. I, I did volunteer work in a church for 10 years as part of my educational process. Half of that, I suppose, I worked in the uh, business field providing an income. But uh, a lot of it was just volunteer and uh you know, the educational component that comes out of that is a big deal. And I'll get into more of that in my next video called The Abundant Life. But I wanted to share that with you is uh, that might be useful, that tool to you at this time. You know, and I talked in my last video about uh, on the weekend about those uh, humor quips about this hour is six minutes about John the Baptist. And since the days of John the Baptist, it says in ancient scripture, the kingdom of heaven has been taken by violence and the violent taken by force. So as a person, you got to decide what you believe about violence, fighting and war. And although I don't promote those things heavily, you got to believe, will you defend yourself in certain situations? I kind of laugh when people say, well, do you have any weapons? Well, what's a weapon? I don't own a gun. Anymore, I used to own rifles and shotguns when I was younger. But, you know, if you had to defend yourself, that kid's metal baseball bat you have might deter a thief or someone breaking into your house, a perpetrator, before the police can get there. Or, uh, you know, that hockey stick you got in the porch. Or that hatchet you have and use as you go camping. So you need to make those decisions. We're in tough times I'd like to think everybody's as neighborly as knocking on your door and saying, can I borrow a can of soup? I'll pay you back tomorrow once I go shopping or my pay comes in. The world's not like that. Prayer helps a lot. Praying protection over yourself. And uh, this Sunday, I think I'm going to be doing uh, a Sunday Pro e-Inspire Hour I'll talk more about kind of God's protection and provision in some of that as well. Because I think, you know, you need to, as a good man, providing for your family, call upon that. If God can uh, sway circumstances away from you that are detrimental, why not, hey? Pull on that power as a good faithful servant. And that's our Good Samaritan Pro 
just as far as me as a businessman goes, uh, I have kind of my specialty in this personal development business consulting company. Some key areas I focus on in the 14 companies and the growth of the person, the individual, the customer who's uh, assigned to come and buy my services or wants them. You know, I, I've had a single this journey as a single person. I've been married, I've been in relationships with uh, other ladies at different times, but uh, there's been a lot of singleness in my life. And so overcoming the stereotype of, not only just the stereotype of what people think of you, because it's not a bad word, being alone and content with what you do and how you live your life, but you need to be happy and you need to be structured in a way that presents a positive mental attitude out into public and keeping your own spirits up. And uh, so I've had a successful journey in that, in doing that and promoting that as part of my company and the singleness element of it. So that's something that I would be an expert in my field at. As well, just going through the challenges of family breakup and uh, being through divorce and then your kids are no longer living with you and the sadness of that and how to just equip yourself to go forward and stay in touch with them and fight through the court battles and all that, I suppose. But so there's experience there and you can pass that knowledge on to other people. Maybe you have that and you can just be one encouragement to one of your friends, right? If you've done it well and you're not dwelling down in it. I also have the Good Samaritan Pro side of our business where it's uh, serving the humanitarian stuff and talking about that and lending the Stop Bully Pro information and all that because I've had a life of uh, doing that kind of stuff, serving and helping others, passing on knowledge, teach up, teach pro, all that. And then fourthly, out of the five main areas I focus on, in the elements of the information dispersed out to all of my different 14 companies is the business enterprise side of things. I've been a business person my entire life. Now I'm a business consultant, giving advice and teaching to others in corporations and the individual, whoever subscribes to this and wants to tap into our free information as long as we keep putting it here. So business enterprise. My technical background, number five, was the agriculture food industry. Ag food. So I've got an expertise in both the grain marketing, commodity, crop purchase side, as well as the crop products for the uh, sanctity of the growth, putting the good fuel in the field, the good diversity of uh, growth, not hormones, but uh, fertility and nutrition and stuff and making the plants grow and keeping the weeds and the diseases at bay. So those are five areas, you know, if I'm ever out in public and mingling around doing my daily life and I see you and somehow you get talking to me or we want to talk or something, those are five areas you can key on key on and ask my advice if you want to key in on. Or another way to go about it, and I'm just being helpful here, is tell me something about what you're doing. I love to hear people's stories and their opinions and uh, what they think about stuff. Maybe you're an expert in... Uh, plant, uh, you know, uh, geology or something or uh, marine biology and you want to share, you just want to tell me something that you're working on or whatever and I'll, I, I find it interesting to hear what people are up to and discover areas of this world that I'm not, you know, everyday familiar with and hear people's specialty because there's always something you learn of interest and plus, uh, you know, you get, you hear what how someone else is maybe changing the world and their element of things. So I always find that interesting and I always afford some time to do that. I've had some good talks lately with people in the last month. And sometimes when you get talking to people, you find out about opportunities that you didn't know about more than you can just search out on Google and the internet and job work sites or whatever. You find out opportunities you can structure into more work down the road more friendship opportunities to play sports, I suppose, or anything, or even investment opportunities, right? So it's good to mingle in your community and get along, make an impact, be a man in these tough times, stand up, pull up your socks, get on with it, put your boots on, get going, don't dwell down in it, find a way, look for an opportunity, seek the heart of the Lord, 
to show you guidance as to what you're to do, your next steps. And, you know, like, uh, the Lord is very specific. I, I talk about this in my Body, Mind, Spirit Pro of Self Leadership each day in the Good Samaritan side of our company. And he, the Lord is specific. Like, there's many examples in Scripture, and I'll give you one. If you want to read Acts chapter 9, the book of Acts, A-C-T-S, the book of Acts for acting, like taking steps, taking action, I suppose. And the Lord specifically gave instructions to one man. You'll see in that chapter, it's around verse 11, 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there. And that man was supposed to go down to a certain place in town, to a street with a certain name, and go meet a certain guy. And they were supposed to enter into a a prayer moment or something, and then go forward into the future. And the other person was having a vision of that, foretelling of it happening as the Lord was directing the other guy. So God will do this with people. So um, he is very specific about you and your life and what you're up to and the hardship you might be in. And he has a promise, I will never leave you or forsake you. So he's always there somewhere in your life wanting and willing to guide you if you look to him and desire going forward in a positive way and not giving up hope and dying in it all. There's no reason anybody has to. doesn't mean there aren't challenges. There's always challenges in life for people who uh, do this and seek the knowledge of the Lord or don't. There's always challenges. It's just the way it is. That's life. And you got to get over that idea that you think you're on some easy life Because you made the choice to have the Christian belief that I've talked about in my Hey Dude, Listen Big video. And you have that belief. God's not a slot machine. You don't pop a dollar in and hope to get a hundred out. Like, it's a way of life for your own personal peace. And uh, for your betterment for now and the future into eternity. So there's rewards. And I talk about those. Uh, They're in the ancient scripture. Um, in some of my videos, but even in this life, don't you like to get access to the best rewards you can for whatever you're doing? Why don't you sign up for the loyalty programs? I have a hard time sometimes administering things. Oh, do you have your so-and-so loyalty number? Actually, no, I don't. It's at home. Then you can't find it. (laughs) There's some, they got it on the keychain. That's easy. You just swipe it. And, uh, but getting the administration, so you can cash it in is the big thing too, right? You got to follow through. And I think good companies um, make it accessible for you and not um, a cumbersome thing. So you can cash your rewards in because they've already budgeted. And I'm a marketing guy. And I know how corporations work. I've been in them my whole life. They've already budgeted as a cost to doing business, the rewards that everybody is entitled to by the amount of business they track with you. So they've already written it in as a cost of business. So it's shady business if you're relying on your rewards that won't be cashed in to go back on as profit on your bottom line. You need to be forthright and a business that's uh, honest with people and you're going to tell them, look, just do this, this, and this. You can cash in your rewards today. You have this many points. That'll give you this amount of quantity of our products and services. And uh, here's how you can cash it in right while you're standing here in front of me. That's what good companies do. And I thank you for this time. And uh, I've got a, there's, everybody has reward systems nowadays. I've got a few that I kind of dwell into. I sure would like to use my air mile points soon. I probably should cash those in and, Go to Jamaica or somewhere on a holiday, but I don't know that that would happen until after Christmas. I got enough on the go here, and we're waiting on the money and the structure, and I'll probably just take a few little weekend trips to get away and, uh, you know, have four or five days uh, over a few weekends here uh, before Christmas and go reverb and recharge and go on some nice mountain drives or out the other way in the prairie. And maybe by then I'll even have, maybe my company will have acquired the finances to, uh, and I'm hoping for that. It's all right in the week. This is the week. 
And then, and uh, you know, so we're going to next week. We're late. And uh, based on the promises, maybe I'll have my company car. That courier package can come here in a minute. And in a minute, life can change. In a minute. And I hope for the change for the better. And But you never know. Sometimes it can change for the more drastic. And I hope that on nobody. But you got a value today. And I guess the question as we close off is, in this business enterprise side, we'll just tap into the Good Samaritan Pro side again, is uh, are you ready to go? If your life was over today, are you ready to go? Have you got your heart right with the Lord? Have you kind of questioned yourself? Have you put the old unfinished business behind you? You're not dwelling on it anymore. And, you know, you've been forgiven of things you did in the past, wrong things, sins, I suppose. But don't go back into those things in your mind and dwell on them anymore because you're not doing them anymore, perhaps, obviously. So don't go back there and revisit it again and feel bad about it. And probably the reason you are is you're not going forward into the new plan that the Lord is trying to guide you and direct you in, in this Good Samaritan Pro side of our company. He's saying... This is what I want you to do, so-and-so. And And you're praying and you're hearing that and your advice from others and stuff. You need to trim down, reshape your ship. And then if you're not doing it, the mental attitude in all of us goes back into the past. That's just how the body function works unless we're putting it forward and uh, being about the business we're supposed to be being about, being about my father's business. So go from there, stay positive, Know you're ready to go if you are. Live each day. Live ready in your heart and in your spirit. And accommodate that to others. Get along well. These are encouragements and they're just good good societal stances and positions as you focus on the call in your life, what you're called to do in your work, in your person, in your humanitarian leadership as you give and serve in community. And you stay alive and you... uh, Don't end up in a white squall like that movie uh, with Jeff Bridges about that school sailing ship with all those young people that were out on this journey, young guys learning how to sail and they were taking their grade 12 and all that. And all of a sudden a white squall comes in from out of nowhere. Sometimes you don't know what might come in from the side and you don't know. And it's you can manage life and all its risks expected based on logarithms and journey in the experience, past experience, what's foretold about the future or projected. Uh, but you don't always know. There's unknowns. So uh, you just have to be ready for anything and be positive and live ready in your heart. And uh, that's about it for this Be A Man Impact. Remember that good uh, suggestion I gave you for equipping you forward? You might want to tap into the website and take that course. I imagine before too long they'll be back sharing in those classroom journeys in person. And I I went through this course. I don't agree with it all, but I agree with probably 90% of it based on the ancient scripture. And you know what? If you can commonly get together with people um and agree on the majority of things you don't have to agree on every little thing i've been through a number of these kind of things through the journey of my life when i showed up at this place uh cs church and became a member i was pretty much uh just wanting to explore what they had so i can uh, promote it to other people when needed when people have real needs in society there's a tool there they can go to when maybe other parts of the world are letting them down, things they tried in the past. And uh, sometimes even psychology doesn't even have the answers. But uh, in the uh, you know Christian message of the scriptures, there's answers for everybody, no matter what you're doing. You, and I tend to promote the business side and the side of living your life and living it positively and healthily. So that's what I'm about. Bernie May here from Connections Consulting, signing off. I gotta go get another coffee and then I'll talk to you in a minute about the abundant life. Amen. Have a good night. Have a good day.